before we start this next video, a large thank you to Bernard, NSK, Re, Dead Broadcast, Gabriel, and a special thank you to Albright for their immense support to this channel on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello guys, okay, so today we're going to make it so our enemy rotates properly. And by that I mean, I'll just show you. We're going to go up here now and actually aggro this, this guy over here. And when he follows us, you can see uh, he attacks fine, but then when he turns around, he has this little half circle thing that I'm not too much uh, a fan of, and that's not very Souls-like. So in Dark Souls, after the enemy attacks, they'll actually go into a state where they look for you, and depending on where you are on the screen, they will rotate towards you appropriately using root motion. So they kind of stop and stand in place most of the time, and they'll turn around to face you uh, after an attack. So we're going to actually implement that in our game today. And uh, to do that, I have three animations, turn right, turn left, and turn behind. Um, and I got these, I think, in the Protector animation set on the Unity Asset Store that I purchased a while ago. But again, any animation that makes you turn left, turn right, and turn around will work. You can find plenty of those. And you want to uncheck Bake into Pose. At least I had to. Uh, thank you to Sharp Accent for pointing this out in a Discord conversation with me. I could not for the life of me figure out why I was not rotating with root motion. I had to uncheck that box. So uh, we were going to want to go into our animation window here now. And we're going to go to the override state. And we're going to drop in all three of these animations. And then we're going to make a transition to the empty state. And this is going to be a pretty straightforward uh, topic. What we're going to do is we're going to make a rotate towards target state, which we'll call every time after we leave our attack state. And then uh, we're going to rotate towards the player, wherever he's on the screen. And then we'll go back into our combat stand state and go back into our attack state from there. So let's make transitions to the empty states here from all these. And to figure out where our player is in relation to our enemy, we just need to use um, a thing called sine angle, uh, vector 3 sine angle. We're not using regular angle because that can't return a negative value. But if we use sine angle, it can return a negative value. So we're just going to open up the script here. I'm going to say namespace SG. I'm going to delete the start and update functionality. I'm going to make sure this script derives from our base class of state. And then I'm going to implement the abstract state or abstract class rather. Uh, but first, we're going to call upon a variable, variable of type combat stance state. And I'm not going to uh, actually call that right now or declare it. We're going to use it in the next video. But let's just put it there for now so it is there. And uh, all right, let's let's actually throw in some logic here in our uh, in our tick. So first thing is first, when we enter the state, we're going to want no movement when we start to rotate. So let's make sure we are saying uh, enemy animator manager dot animator dot set float vertical to zero and do the same to horizontal. You guys aren't using the horizontal right now, but we're going to in the next video because we're going to start our um, process of enemy circling. So the, the enemy will circle around the player while he's doing a cooldown waiting for another attack. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So. What do we need for this? Well, like I said before, we need to know uh, where we are in relation to the enemy for him to know where to turn towards us. So first, let's bring in our target's direction. And that is going to be equal to the enemy manager dot current target. And that is going to be dot transform dot position minus and we're going to say enemy manager dot transform dot position. Make sure you don't accidentally say transform dot position on this because this script sits on an empty game object under another empty game object, which is under the enemy manager. So you want to use the actual enemy manager for the position reference. Then we're going to say float viewable angle is equal to, as I said before, vector three signed angle. And then we're going to use our uh, target direction followed by our enemy manager dot, dot transform dot forward and then just vector three dot up. So this will return a value between 0 and 180 or, uh, or 0 and negative 180. So um, that's going to work perfectly for what we wanted to uh, do in this script here. So now we actually get to the functionality of this, this state. And we're going to start off by doing a simple test to make sure this works. So I'm only going to set up one angle at first. I'm going to say if viewable angle, we're going to start by saying is greater than or equal to 100 and viewable angle is less than or equal to 180 and the enemy manager is not interacting or that we will play the we won't play the animation several times in a row then so if we're already in animation we can't play this animation and then we're going to say enemy animator manager dot play target animation and then we're going to say this one will be turn around i think yeah this is the full 180 so we're just going to say turn around 
And then we're going to say true because this is going to be an interacting animation. Now, you may want to play with these values a bit. Uh, I'm going to return this day after. These are the values that I use in my solo project with these animations. If your animations are a bit different than mine or, you're, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that come into play, but you may have to play around with these viewable angle of values. Now, before we move on, let's go to the enemy states. Let's create a new state empty game object and call that rotate towards target state. I'm going to add the script to the state. It's going to be rotate towards target. And then on the enemy manager up here, where is it? Here we go. Let's go down here and let's drag in that state. It's going to return us an error because we have no target when we start the game, but that's okay. We can just drag the target in for testing purposes. Now let's go to play target animation. We're going to want to do something different here. So right now this uses root motion, but it does not use um, root motion rotation. So let's actually make another public void here on the animator manager. And let's say play target animation with root motion, uh, with root rotation, sorry. And we can copy and paste um, most of the stuff from this top function here and we're going to replace the can rotate bull with we're going to say is using root motion rotation so we're just going to change this to true because if we do declare this we are and we haven't made this bully on the animator but we will in just a second so we're going to say is rotating with root motion rather that sounds a lot more clear okay and then let's go to the animator let's make that bull right away and basically, if this bull is checked, we're also going to use the root mo the root rotation in the animation and not just the motion. So let's just say uh, is rotating with root motion. And then let's add on our empty state here. Uh, we're going to reset that every time the animation is done. That way, after we do one, one animation with that, we know, OK, we're not rotating with root motion anymore. Um, and let's make a public string is rotating with root motion equals, you know how to do this by now. And guys, the reason why I'm doing this is because we actually rotate ourselves in, a, in, our, in our attacks manually. And so does the enemy. For example, like if you're locked onto a target, you're going to rotate towards that target um, for a brief moment while you're attacking. If you actually enable root motion rotation, um, you won't do that because you, the animation or the rotation will rather will try to get its rotation from the animation instead of instead of from the values that we have assigned. So we only want to use this in special circumstances is what I'm trying to say. If you want to use it everywhere, by all means, go for it. And that's fine too. So next, let's open up our character manager and we're going to add a bull here. We're actually going to have to add a header too. So I, I guess I would consider this a locomotion flag. So we have our combat flags here. So yeah, let's just call this a movement flag. So make a header and let's just say movement flag, flags. And I'm going to make a public bull we're going to call it again is rotating with root motion. So you know what we're doing here, I'm sure. We always uh, get our, our bulls from our animator and we set them on our character or player managers. So let's go to our enemy manager because we're not going to use this one on our player manager right now at this point in time in the series. And let's go to our update method. And right here where we say is interacting is equal to um, the, the bull is interacting. Above that, we're going to say is rotating with root motion is equal to enemy animator manager dot animator dot get bull is rotating with root motion. OK, and now we're going to go to our animator manager. And there's a thing there we call called on animator move. And you guys might not remember this, but this is what makes us move with root motion. Basically, now, as you can see, we're assigning our velocity from the, uh, the rigid body and stuff there. So we're going to say if enemy manager dot is rotating with root motion. And then we're going to want to say uh, enemy manager dot transform dot rotation times equals animator dot delta rotation. And again, thank you to sharp accent. That is a times equals. Don't just assign it as the default value. You want to do times equals so it, it rotates over time and is not just inserting the raw value that will look too rigid. Uh, so thank you to sharp accent for pointing that as well. And now we're going to go to the enemy animator manager and we're going to say play target animation with root motion or with root rotation, sorry. And uh, we should be good to go. So let's save that. I have so many projects open. Oh my goodness. All right. Let's go to the idle state. Actually, you know what? We can just, we can just drag this in. Let's for testing purposes. Let's start the game. You're going to get an error here. Um, ignore that. So now click on our, on our enemy and right where our current target is just assign our player because we're only testing it out to make sure the functionality works and he should rotate around when I get a bit closer. So let's, yep, there he goes. Okay, cool. So that works. Now let's actually assign the rest of the rotation values. 
Um, if you noticed, we're going to go in here now and like I said, you may have to edit some of these values a little bit depending on your animations. They might not be exactly like mine, but these are the values I'm using in my solo project. Uh, they work for me pretty perfectly. So we're going to say else if viewable angle is less than or equal to minus 101 and viewable angle is greater than or equal to minus 180 and we are not interacting in an animation already, we're going to play, again, uh, turn behind. Because this is signed angle and it returns values between 0 and 180 and 0 and minus 180. So for that reason, you're going to want to have both of these make your enemy turn around towards the player. And then all that's left is turning left or turning right towards the player. So we're just going to say that is true. We are interacting. And then we're going to say else if viewable angle. And then we're going to say is less than or equal to minus 45 and viewable angle is greater than or equal to minus 100 and we are not interacting and then we're going to play the animation enemy animator manager dot play target animation with through motion and we're going to say turn right and we are interacting that is true and then lastly else if we're going to say else if viewable angle If that is going to be greater or equal to 45 and viewable angle is less than or equal to 100 and we are not interacting, then we're going to play the animation enemy animator manager dot play target animation with through motion. We're going to say turn left and that is true. Now after this, we should be good and we should have our enemy rotating towards the character in a much nicer manner. Um, we're going to expand upon this in the next video because we're actually going to fully uh, hook up everything and get him to circle around the player after attack cooldowns. So he'll kind of like circle around you while waiting to attack. But one thing at a time, let's make sure this works nicely first before we jump into that. So let's start the game here and I'm going to approach him and again. I got to drag my target into his uh, his target variable here because we don't have the idle state hooked up. All right, there we go. And now, yep, he's faced us. Now, if I lock on him and I circle him, there we go. He turns towards us. Awesome. He's turning to the right. Now, let's see. Yep, he's turning all the way to the right. So let's just make sure he goes to the left now too. There we go. He turns to the left. All right, guys. So now you have a much nicer way of getting your enemy to face you before he begins pursuit or attack. And in the next video, we're going to make it so the enemy will actually circle around the player if he's cooling down from an attack. And upon reaching a cooldown period uh, or cooldown completion, he will approach the player and attack again. Then he will rotate to face the player. He will circle the player again. The process will repeat. And this is the foundation to a more intelligent AI so we can kind of get closer to our, uh, our boss events. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If it did help you, leave a like below. Drop a comment. It does genuinely help my series get around. And if you are feeling super generous, check out my Patreon below. I will see you guys next week.